round so far. Excellent. That's what we love to hear. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us today in the first ever Hasbro Action Brands panel at WonderCon. Um, so there are four of us up here today representing five different Hasbro brands. Do we all want to introduce ourselves at the top so that they're not like awkwardly staring at us trying to figure out who we are? Excellent. Hi, I'm Emily. Um, I am serving as your MC for today and representing the Ghostbusters and G.I. Joe brands. And I am joined by, oh, thank you very much, joined by. Hey guys, I'm Ryan. I'm in marketing on the Marvel Legends team. And a big shout out to Emily for making sure all this, uh, it's our first WonderCon panel, as she said. So thank you, Emily, for, for getting that together. <laughs> Uh, and I am Ben, or BMAC, as most of you probably know me by at this point. Um, just a moniker that has stuck, and I work on Transformers marketing and action brands. Hi, everyone. I'm Priya. I work on Star Wars marketing. Really excited to be here. All right. And this is Priya's first panel by herself for Star Wars. So we are going to be very nice to her, right? Hi, yeah, we stars. are. And because we really believe in just throwing people into the deep end, Priya's up first. <laughs> Love it. Let's, let's dive right in. I'm excited to be here. I'm sure you are. So kicking it off with Star Wars, a picture of me with Grogu, of course, yeah. Priya Marketing. So let's dive right in. I'm super excited to be here once again, and we're all reeling from all of the amazing reveals that we had for Imperial March. Uh, we had the super incredible Moff Gideon helmet that you can see on screen here, incredible deco, and of course those super cool looking new Jedi figures from Acolyte. Um, that trailer just dropped and it looks sick, so we are super excited and just hyped that we were able to reveal these figures, you know, right in time with that as well. So be sure to visit starwars.com slash imperial march just for the full slate of reveals, but um, diving right into the real reason why we are here, kicking it off with the vintage collection. So first up, we have a figure that we definitely wanted to bring into the line. So our beloved street rat termed freedom fighting Jedi, we have Ezra Bridger here. So this is Ezra in his live action version for the first time ever in the three and three quarter inch scale across all of our lines. Um, we did have the Black Series version that came out last fall, but excited to be bringing him into vintage this time around. And this is the version that we saw um, on Sabine's hologram. So that's that version of Ezra. And diving into a little bit of a closer look, um, this figure comes with an updated torso and um, deco updates. So the live action version, as you can see here, kind of has that different shaping on the chest um, with a narrow collar, kind of the orange detailing that you see as well. The HasLab version, as I'm sure most of you should be familiar with at this point, is his end of season appearance. So that kind of had slightly different ribbing and that weren't stripe um, down his armor. But this particular live action version comes with blaster pistol, lit lightsaber, and an unlit hilt. And of course, that unlit hilt can be plugged in uh, to his belt as well. And he has a holster for that blaster too. So really excited to be bringing him into the line um taking a quick look at the packaging here this hero of lothal ezra is vc number 319 and once again we see on that card back the uh, hologram live action image that we saw in the show and just excited that we're able to bring this figure into the line so now that we saw his Padawan. Uh, we're excited for the super cool looking mentor and leader of the Rebels crew, Kanan Jarrus, of course, in his season one look here um, while he was in hiding after having forsaken the Jedi Order. And of course, you know, before he lost his eyesight as well, unlike that HasLab version, once again, as we're all hopefully excited and familiar with, which is his end of season look. So taking a closer look, um, he is almost entirely newly tooled. We see a different portrait in the eyes, um, along with that unique costume. And true to Kanan, that weathered logo on his shoulder, along with the classic armor. This Kanan also comes with his blaster and belt holster, along with a lit lightsaber and unlit hilt that can also be plugged in. And all of this really completes that look. I mean, the, the figures that we have, you know, on the screen here, like those shots, it's, it's just really awesome and kind of able to capture him in action like that. And as for packaging, we see that Rebels film out on the card back. And given the sheer variety of entertainment appearances, 
Rather than going into realistic interpretations of these animated characters, we as a team just decided that we're going to stay true to the entertainment references on the card back. So that's what you can see here. Once again, another great addition to the line. Um, this is my favorite part, the availability. So it's a little wordy, bear with me guys. But as we mentioned on the latest live stream, we are trying to get all the information out to you guys about where you can find these figures and where to get them globally. So both Ezra and Kanan are available on Fan Channel and Amazon in the US, Mainline in Canada, Fan Channel and Amazon, including Hasbro Pulse in Europe, and Fan Channel in Asia and Pacific. So both will be up for pre-order April 3rd at 1 p.m. EST, and both will be available summer of 2024. And now I can take a breath. That's work. And can we, Thanks for bearing with me. Yeah, you give Priya a round of applause. That was a lot of work. <laughs> You're feeling it. Great job. Thanks. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to be sharing these. We've been holding on to them for a while, so it's kind of nice to be like, here they are. So sticking with our favorite crew, of course, we can't forget the muscle. So here we have Zeb. This is once again in his season one look featuring those classic shoulder pads. And unlike that end of season look in his HasLab version where he kind of has his really, you know, beefy shoulder boulders out on display, um, this one comes with some major new sculptural details. And we see that across the whole figure, you know, from his face portrait to the chest, across belt and legs as well. And of course, the signature bow rifle here that we see in that expanded staff form and really cool looking electricity effects that kind of complete that look. So he looks awesome and just like super formidable. So diving a little bit deeper, um, this unique new face portrait, you can see he's a lot more like stoic and kind of focused and determined. Um, if you recall the HasLab version, the way I think of it, he's almost like a little bit more smirky and like kind of that edgy personality shining through a bit more. And this one, he's like, he's on a mission, like super just determined. And you can see he has that classic V-shaped chest armor, which is unlike the HasLab version as well. And he comes with unique graffiti that we can see actually from Sabine. It's kind of coming on that shoulder armor into his chest. And then if we go a little bit further down, we see that unique detailing on his belt too. So once again, that signature bow rifle, this time in the blaster form. And he's an incredibly fun figure to, to pose out. I know Emily telling me this quite a bit too. It's just, he's, he's a lot of fun to work with and really be able to capture all of these super dynamic shots. So another, another great ad, excited to be bringing him into the line. And a quick look at the packaging. Once again, this is gonna be in our deluxe figure packaging featuring those kind of iconic diorama shots. Uh, the main source of inspiration for the photography on this particular one was from Rebels Season 1, Episode 4, um, Fight or Flight. So we really aim to recreate that kind of cityscape and capture that lighting on package here. And once again, love that stoic yet determined look that he has in his blaster stance. So another great add to the line. And once again, for availability, Zeb will be available in fan channel in the US and Canada. Fan Channel and Amazon, including Hasbro Pulse in Europe, and Fan Channel in Asia and Pacific. So along with Kanan and Ezra, Zeb will also be available for pre-order on April 3rd at 1 p.m. EST, and he will be available summer of 2024. So that wraps it up for the vintage collection reveals for today. So shifting gears into Black Series, I uh, think this is a familiar face that might help round out your Cantina collection. We have Moma Nadon. So really excited to be bringing him in, also affectionately known as Hammerhead. Um, as some of you can probably guess, he is a partial from Doc Ondar. And fun fact is that we always built MoMA, you know, in mind. Like, he was part of the plan all along. So it is a great moment to be able to finally reveal and kind of share that with you guys at this point and get a great opportunity to get another one of the denizens from the cantina into the line. So a little bit more about him. As, as we know, he's humanoid, but not really, you know, like the other aliens. There's this super fun form factor, and he is incredibly cool looking. Uh, we, you know, he comes with a fully newly sculpted head. Um, it's a little bit deeper and his neck is a lot longer. You can notice those differences um, from Doc. And this particular MoMA comes with three drinking cups too. So we wanted to include those so that you can kind of really build out that scene and, you know, pose them out as a patron. And this way you also get some extra cups for your cantina scene too. 
Um, and in addition to those three cups, he comes with an E11 blaster. So once again, a great addition to building out your A New Hope collection. Um, happy to be bringing them out here. And then for the packaging, he comes in our new deluxe uh, Black Series packaging that's kind of extra deeper. And he is number seven in the A New Hope lineup. As you can see, there's actually a background, you know, from the cantina as well to really help set that scene. And for the side, you know, mural panel uh, shot that you see there, we took some creative liberties with the blaster pose. So you could kind of say it's a little bit of an off-screen moment, um, which our, our team had some fun with. So all in all, just a really cool looking alien to be able to get into the line. Um, I know that lots of people, there's, there's just lots of love for aliens in general and kind of asked to get different, you know, um, characters and figures into our collection. So this is um, this is another one to be able to add, and we're, we're happy to be able to bring them out to you guys. So finally, for the fun part, for all of the <laughs> wordy pre-order information, so MoMA is available on Fan Channel in the U.S. and Canada once again, Fan Channel on Amazon, including Hasbro Pulse in Europe, Fan Channel in Asia, and then he is an EB Games slash Zing exclusive in the Pacific. So like the other three vintage collection figures, MoMA will also be up for pre-order on April 3rd at 1 p.m. EST and available fall of 2024. So that wraps it up for Star Wars reveals today. I'm really thrilled to be here and I've shared everything with you guys. So thank you. And may the force be with you all. Nailed it. You uh, it. <laughs> so uh, for the Q&A portion, so we're going to have everybody save questions until the end in the hopes that we have a little bit of time. So for the Q&A portion today, keep in mind we are only going to be answering questions about things that we have discussed on the panel today, right? Nodding, everybody says, yes, Emily, I hear you. And if I ask one of the questions about something that isn't discussed on the panel today, I understand that I will be ignored. Good? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, perfect. Love this for us. All right, so next up, it's Transformers. Oh, hey, I get to go. <laughs> perfect. All right, so again, my name is BMAC, uh, is what I go by. My good friend Marcelo drew this nice little icon for me. I said, make me a Decepticon with a beard, and he provided it. It's awesome. Uh, I love this. So up first, a uh, little recap. We revealed this awesome collab with our friends at Nickelodeon and Paramount on Thursday. The Party Wall Up is joining your collection. Um, shout out to Matt Cohen shooting the galaxy for these awesome pictures on this as well. Um, again, everybody needs six of these because you need four turtles, a van, and one in pack. That's what Ryan told me. So um, Six. <laughs> um, and just a couple other beautiful shots here of the wagon itself on the next slide. So again, available for pre-order right now. This is coming out this summer. We have a lot more stuff coming with this with our good friends at Paramount and Nickelodeon. So definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, going to be a really awesome item. Very excited that we finally got to show this to the world and working on it for like a year and a half. So, all right. Uh, we did a whole bunch of fan streams for the last month, uh, every Thursday, celebrating the 40th anniversary of Transformers. I know I kind of left Studio Series out, and then I kind of hinted that very soon would be Studio Series, so today is that day. Um, officially, Studio Series Wave 2. Up first, we have Deluxe Class uh, Sunstreaker from Bumblebee Movie Concept Art. So, uh, I know most of you probably already know this is coming, but officially revealing it is coming and will be available for pre-order on Thursday, April 4th, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then sticking with Deluxe, we also have a Deluxe character. Oh, right, I have a 360 video. I forgot about this. Is it going to play? If, if, I you hit click, the, if you click one more time, it if should. If I click the button, if I hit play on here. Oh, oh look, we're learning. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Can you tell we absolutely practiced this before we got here? <laughs> um, Love that our model shop, Nick and Tony, uh, do a great job of taking the files that Evan and team work on and just turn these into these beautiful 360s so everybody knows exactly what they're getting in their toy. Uh, sticking with Deluxe Class, we have Gamer Edition Sideswipe. Um, Evan kind of mentioned this in the fan stream the other day, that it's nice because he never really got his own sculpt back when we did these toys before, so officially an own, his own version of Sideswipe, so that will be coming uh, as well. When we go to the next slide, we can watch the video again. And I'm going to try hitting next again, and it's going to automatically Look at that. Play. Wow, like Perfect. magic. Um, so again, uh, Sideswipe, much like Sunstreaker, will be available for pre-order on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's a mainline item, so everywhere you like to pre-order your toys at is where he will be available. We're going to go to Voyager next. Um, 
Shockwave, who doesn't like a Shockwave? We finally, you know, we made the core class one about a year and a half ago. We needed to make him in his proper size. The purples are really incredible. Sam actually worked on this one, and um, this figure is absolutely beefy, awesome. Needed to be in there from that first five minutes scene at the beginning of Bumblebee. We got a pretty video of him as well, so you can see him in his bot mode. And you get these turns, and you can see he has his hose. A lot of fun. Uh, Really great character design in that movie. And then his alt tank mode um, that is just beefy as could be. All right. So I'm pretty sure this next one is definitely what everybody is here to see. We threw the space bridge this. So none other than our final fifth Dinobot leader swoop. I didn't cancel them despite me joking that I was going to. I swear you're going to get all your Dinobots. Um, so... Evan worked very hardly with Hisui, I believe it was, on all five of the Dinobots to make sure we got those authentic 1986 Dinobots in here. You can see he comes with his two swords. Um, you can store them both in bot and alt mode. And this character just looks really fun. Um, every time I go to talk to Evan in his office, he has all the Dinobots lined up, and he just has Swoop posed up on top of an Optimus trailer, and it looks really awesome. Um, so I know everybody's going to be excited for this. So much like the others, this one will be available for pre-order on Thursday, April 4th at 1 p.m. Eastern, everywhere you like to buy your toys, including Hasbro Pulse, Amazon, um, all fan channels. So I think that does it for Studio Series. And then let's do a little Through the Space Bridge, because everybody seems to like this. So Legacy United Wave 3 will be revealing uh, the official figure soon. So this is Robots in Disguise uh, Sideburn. He will be perfect for your HasLab that everybody just backed. Thanks again, 28,000 backers for HasLab Omega Prime. Um, it will fit on the uh, Ultra Magnus trailer, so you know you need to kind of build out that scene. Super fun there. Um, the next two are name reveals only. Um, Cybertron Universe Hotshot will be coming in Wave 3 as well. Um, not such so much the truck version that we did in the past is very much car version, so that'll be a fun, nice reveal. And Takar Tomi actually designed that one in partnership with us. They kind of led the development, and we just held their hand a little bit. Um, joining our Armorizer line, we have Infernac Universe Nucleus is the next Armorizer Rock Lord inspired character. He looks really awesome. Mark did a lot of really fun uh, build out on him. And then last but not least, coming at Voyager scale, we have Voyager Vector Prime um, and the Blade of Time. It's going to be a lot of fun to get that in Wave 3, and we'll be back with those official reveals sometime in April for you. And that's what I got for Transformers. Thank you for listening. Excellent. So we are two down, three to go. Hey, Ryan, would you like me to move this laptop between us so you can see the slides? Sure. Great. Okay, we're going to do this. Please hold. All right, in the meantime, uh, I just want to say it's super fun to be back at WonderCon because I attended WonderCon in 2012 just as a fan, long before I ever knew I would have the privilege of working on Marvel Legends, so it's especially cool to be back here uh, for the first time in an official Hasbro Action Brands panel capacity. So let's, let's get right into it. Can I drive here? You, you are welcome to drive. Thank you All for right. asking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so into the Marvel Legends. I am Ryan. I am on the marketing team here uh, from back home in Rhode Island. Dwight sends his hugs, and Dwight, or Dan, I should say, Dan sends his yo-yos. All right, so <laughs> let's let's get into this. That is very Dan. At the risk of at the risk of making uh, Brian really nervous, I was going to ask who is excited for uh, Wolverine and Deadpool, Deadpool and Wolverine later this year. Would you like to see some new Legends figures for this movie? Yes, I would too, and I haven't seen them yet, so neither will you, though. Stay tuned to come uh, for that. In the meantime, we wanted to recap our Deadpool Legacy collection revealed two days ago uh, through Screen Rant, I believe, and these will be going up for a pre-order on April 1st, uh, Deadpool, Happy Pools Day. Uh, what was it? What was it? I forgot it. It's uh, That's right. That's right. There you go. But anyways, uh, for those collectors here, right, we know these figures are essentially package refreshes, but... The reason why we're doing them is so that fans who maybe were not able to get these figures back for the first time in 2020 can now do so fairly easily. This Deadpool, which is an awesome figure, comes with tons of accessories. He was in a two-pack with Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and that two-pack might be a little bit harder to come by these days, so this is an easy way for, for new fans to get Deadpool. And this Wolverine figure, we actually did two Fox movie Wolverine figures back in 2020. There was an Amazon exclusive uh, in this white... Uh, tank top shirt here and jeans, and then there was a mainline 
uh, version with different heads that had a motorcycle jacket. And what this item you see here in the Legacy Collection, as some fans have astutely pointed out, um, this is taking those two heads from the motorcycle jacket version and including them with the exclusive, previously Amazon exclusive white tank top. So it's kind of a kit bash, but all in one in one box here. We liked the hairstyle and the expression of the screaming head. So you guys have seen these. They come with some great accessories. Wolverine has his dog tags, uh, alternate hands. Deadpool has some weapons. He has a unicorn, which is awesome, uh, and two katanas. And here's some, some figures. These were really great likenesses back in 2020. I think they still hold up here. You can get some really fun poses. Uh, Matt Cohen at Shooting the Galaxy, also responsible for these amazing Marvel Legends photos and the, the next ones you'll see after this section. And so here is a shot with Deadpool and his unicorn and uh, Wolverine with his normal claws on there. So again, April 1st, um, these are gonna be multi-channel uh, exclusive, so they should be available everywhere, including the Hasbro Pulse. So go pre-order them Monday. Uh, BMAC was speaking to this being a big year of anniversaries, right? Transformers has a 40th anniversary. We love anniversaries in Marvel, don't we? So we've had Spider-Man 60th, we've had Avengers 60th, uh, and this year, this spring, we are doing 50 years of Wolverine. And so these, these two packs have started to ship. I think um, hopefully you guys are enjoying them. We've got things like Patch and Fix It. We've got that Sabretooth with a Cowboy Logan. So this is celebrating 50 years of Wolverine, these are fan channel shared exclusives, so go check those out on the Pulse if you haven't. And as I was planning with the team what, ex what reveals to do for WonderCon, I was like, man, it would be really great if we had another anniversary, but uh, I don't think we do. But then I realized this actually is an anniversary in some way. So who remembers in 1994, the Toy Biz... <laughs> Iron Man wave, I think there were two, maybe two waves at least for this, but this was an awesome uh, line look and blister card and, and brought out some really interesting characters as well. And we've already used this line look twice before and just a little bit behind the scenes here, we uh, work with the awesome Harry Moore, who is a, a comic book artist and um, he's helped us with this line look as well as our Spider-Man retros. Harry was in our San Diego booth last year for doing some signings for those Spider-Man animated VHS two packs, but he, I asked him, hey, do you guys, do you have the elements from the package that you worked on? I want to showcase them at WonderCon. So this is how the packaging uh, for these lines gets made, right? Because the files from those Toy Biz packages don't exist anymore. So what Harry does so authentically is he basically recreates this. And so you see the Iron Man logo, the character name you see on the, on the left there, as well as that heroic Iron Man pose. And so we take all that and then we combine it into the line look you see here. And we've done this twice so far. First up, we had our 2020 two, I believe it was, uh, the Iron Man with the plasma cannon. That was a PulseCon exclusive. And then later that year, we also put War Machine on this line look with the up with the slightly updated armor uh, art of War Machine. And so those were two. This guy's going to love what we've got coming next because he's going to applaud everything. Um, so, so what we are going to take you through is a full wave of Iron Man retro. This is six figures. It's going to be uh, mainline. That's right. Uh, this is going to be mainline and going up for pre-order uh, on the Hasbro Pulse and others as well. So just jumping right in, I'm going to go, I guess, in reverse chronological order from the most recent Iron Man armor down, down to the, the oldest one, I believe, right? So first up here is our first look at Iron Man Model 20. So I'm showing, I'm going to go through the on-carded shot. You see the back of pack again, which is something that Harry is really awesome at doing these uh, Toy Biz kind of inspired figure outlines that shows all the accessories. And so what you see here in this all new figure, Dwight said, um, we've got this awesome looking Iron Man. He comes with four repulsor blasts. He has fists and blasting hands as well. This has some great articulation and actually has, I'm not, the figure, you might be able to see it. He's got some in this next image. He's got some like back fins. That was a feature of this armor, which you see in the crouching pose, but you can get him in some great dynamic poses. There he is in the superhero landing. And we've also got him um, using those blast effects which go in the hands as well as in the feet if you want him soaring through the air. So this is the first uh, Iron Man figure in this wave. And it's not going to be six Iron Mans, right? We're going to mix in some other characters as well, including some deeper cut villains. So next up you see here, this is Whiplash. And right, guys, Whiplash was in the original Toy Biz line. So this is an awesome uh, update to that. And uh, he comes with his functional and fashionable purple satchel. Uh, ponytail, is green ponytail, that will plug back in. And then uh, an all new a whip chain uh, accessory there to, to battle Iron Man and the Avengers. So you see that new 
tooled up whip piece there and his ponytail plugged in. It, it didn't fit on the blister card uh, plug, like in, installed in his head, so that's why you see it off in the pack out, but it plugs right in. And then this is not, it's not a bendy wire, but it is a flexible kind of plastic, so you can get it in various whipping and slashing poses. That ponytail is spectacular. Could I borrow do, it do you like for the Pythona green? someday? Do you yeah, like the that's green? really good. And, yeah. and we, is Dwight getting a purple satchel, like yeah. life-size? Are you going to grow one for him, wear it around the office? We should. <laughs> yeah. We should. We've used that quite a bit <laughs> in that piece, so we should have a, a life-size version. A couple more shots of Whiplash here, and then Matt Cohen took these awesome shots, and uh, Dan asked him, hey, Matt, can you do some um, like like uh, battle poses? And so we've got some fun poses. So we've got Whiplash, unfortunately, being defeated here by the, the Model 20 Iron Man. Um, but so yeah, so those are, though that is Whiplash going on to another Iron Man figure. This is our Model 9 Iron Man, yeah. mostly new. We've got some new, we've got a new torso here with, um, <laughs> some new boots. <laughs> this is the same guy. He's been in other panels. He is a known. He's a known rabble rouser in other panels. So uh, keep it, keep it coming, sir. Um, we've got new boots. We've got a new head. Uh, what else comes here? We've got new blast effects. They're kind of like smoky, as if you just finished blasting. So those will plug in into the alternate hands, as well as your standard repulsor blasts there. So this figure, because he's got some uh, smooth legs, really, and, and the big bulky boots that allows for another great range of articulation. You see him with the new blast effects there on the left, as well as our standard blast effects on the right. Here he is soaring through the air. Matt really gets these awesome dynamic angles and shots for us, mm -hmm. uh, so we really love those. So this is the second Iron Man for the wave, and then we have one more villain for the wave. This guy has never before been made in an action figure. I think he was in a, in a hero clicks, but but uh, that doesn't count. It's not an action figure. So this is the rookie card, the first appearance of our Count Nefaria. He's been rumored on some lists out there, and so I didn't admittedly know too much about this character, but he's battled the Avengers from since the very early days. His first appearance, what I just looked up on my phone, Avengers 13. So he goes he goes way back as a foe of the Avengers. There, he's got a he's built primarily on the Vulcan body, which we know has got some great articulation. He's got an awesome likeness, which we don't have a close up figure here, uh, an image here, but the, the face, he's just really menacing. He's got a new cape and some alternate fists as well. So um, he can either have the cape on or you can take it off. It's not glued in. Uh, get some dynamic poses. And of course, he can try to fight uh, Iron Man Model 20, but he's probably probably going to go down to, to Iron Man there. All right, so for the, for the fifth, now we're on the fifth figure. This is our third Iron Man for the wave. I love being able to complete famous comic covers, famous, com famous comic teams. And so you'll notice the only figure that we haven't done uh, in this cover, because you know that that classic Wasp is coming, which we revealed back during the Giant Man HasLab campaign last year, but is the gold Model 1 Iron Man. Um, and so when we did the silver Model 1 for the Avengers Beyond Earth's Mightiest last year, you could probably uh, guess we were going to do a gold one, which of course we are here. Um, so you see the gold man, the gold version here, as well as he comes with the alternate Tony Stark head. Uh, Toy Biz and Jesse and team did did a gold version, like a variant back in the day, uh, and so we are doing that here. On the right, I have the example of the 23 silver model Mark One, and then we've got the gold on the left, which you'll notice has that new skirt piece, which is authentic to how he was drawn in the comics. So it's not just a repaint. We're we're trying to stay true to how that character was shown in the comics. So there you have your. Your model one, and I think because the maybe it's because the yellow is a little brighter, but you can really see the uh, the Tony's eyes through the holes uh, in this figure a little more. I feel like, but here's what he comes with. He comes with, but he comes with two blasters as well as the smoke effects. He comes with alternate hands and then that unmasked Tony Stark head. So here is your Iron Man model one. Here here it is Tony holding the helmet, soaring through. And this was a really fun shot. Uh, Matt had uh, Tony kind of checking out the other armors in his hall of armor there. Which brings us to our sixth and final figure for this wave. I think purists will point out that this character was not in the Toy Biz line necessarily, but it is very kind of on theme, and we like to get a little creative when it comes to doing characters that actually were in the Toy Biz line, such as Whiplash, and then bringing in other characters that very well could have been in 1994. And so I hope you guys like it. I, I, bu I built this up to this. It's an all new tool, but here we have she-Hulk, and she is so big that you can kind of see she is uh, bending her legs a little bit to get in the to crouch down to get into the blister. But she is so tall. Uh, this is uh, Dwight and team, amazing sculpt uh, team with the sculpting team to really 
bring through that powerful nature of, of Jennifer Walters that you see here. She is so strong that she could just take you know, someone else's weapon and bend it in half. So that's what you see uh, to, the, to the left of her there. So we'll get to that in a second. But you know, that awesome 80s hairstyle. Uh, this version of She-Hulk was last in the A-Force box set from, from many years ago. I think it was like a Toys R Us exclusive. And so that was a great looking figure at its time. But with modern Legends articulation, we can do things like uh, pinless double elbows on female characters, pinless double knees, as you see here, as well as the awesome new photo reel application on even comic book figures. And see so you here, you see her just bending that that other accessory in half. So she's she's meant to just like grab it out of someone's hand and just she's so strong she can snap it in half. And there you see some more action poses for She-Hulk. So this is going to be our Iron Man retro wave. It is going to go up for pre-order on Tuesday, April 2nd. So after you pre-order your Deadpool legacy items on the 1st, you come back on the 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern and get your Iron Man wave of six. And we hope you guys like it. Yes. There we go. Nice. There's a lot of purple. There's a lot of purple in that wave, and I can't imagine why I like that as a Decepticon. Decepticon. I don't get it. But that She-Hulk's beautiful. Um, so we have about 15 minutes left of the panel, so I'm going to speed run through my stuff so that we can get to at least a couple Q&A questions. Does that sound good? Great. All right. So up first, Ghostbusters. So I'm going to level set with you immediately. We are not announcing any six-inch plasma series figures today. I know there were rumors of that on the internet. I know. There's still two very cool things that we're announcing, uh, so bear with me. But just wanted to level set everybody's expectations. Also to mention, you can expect for backers of the two in the box HasLab that we did last fall, which is delightful. We are just receiving our programming models, which means that we'll be able to send out a backer update shortly. Great news, our electrical engineer, Zach, has been working overtime and the EMF detection abilities, which like I was a little concerned about, right? Like that was a big, big kind of promise that we made. They work and they are very cool. So people are gonna be really excited about it. So that being said, um, we were so excited by the reception of our 118th scale Ecto-1 that we did for Afterlife back when Afterlife came out that we had been getting a lot of questions of, hey, could you like do that again, but 1984 style? And you know what? You betcha, we did. Uh, so up first is going to be our new 118th scale 1984 Ecto-1. So just as a kind of point of comparison from like the Ectos in. So this is the fan focus Ecto, not the one that is for the kid line. So there's more detailing on it. Again, Matt Cohen has been taking all of our pictures lately, took these absolutely gorgeous shots of the Ecto uh, with some interior detail shots here. The gurney that is removable, maybe if you can find proton packs that are sized for, I don't know, three and three quarter inch scale figures, maybe they would fit in the car, maybe, who knows. Um, and then we have a couple more interior shots here as well. So very excited for this. So this is going to be um, available as a see now, buy now on Ghostbusters Day on June 8th. So stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, and remember how I was just like, wow, wouldn't it be really nice if you had like some three and three quarter inch scale proton packs that would fit on the gurney in that Ecto-1? Anybody else be like, wow, she's really leading to something here, isn't she? So we are doing something that is kind of new and exciting for Ghostbusters. Um, so we are actually bringing Ghostbusters to an O-ring scale. Um, so for the first time ever, Ghostbusters is joining our classic Hasbro three and three quarter inch O-ring size. Um, so we have our classic 1984 Ghostbusters. They come with four proton packs, trap goggles, and a PKE. And you know what? I tested it this morning with the model in my hotel room, and gosh darn it if those proton packs don't just fit beautifully on that gurney. I know, right? This is very exciting. So bringing you guys something new. Um, so more information to come on this. These are uh, this is a very early render reveal, um, and we're all very, very excited about it. Um, and it was uh, our graphics designer on Ghostbusters. This was the very first product that he got to design. So it's been very fun. Um, so more information to come on this, but this will be a pre-order on uh, Ghostbusters Day on June 8th. Are we excited? Yes, excellent. Thank you Let's very much. Let's action battle grip, right? Hmm? Oh, yes, absolutely. Ah. Yep. <laughs> God, I wish that would be great. Ah, oh, Ninja Force. Um, all right, so uh, thank you. Super fast on Ghostbusters, so stay tuned for more Ghostbusters news around Ghostbusters Day in June, and hopefully we have some very fun things for you. 
All right, and then rounding it out super fast on last. That's right, it's classified series. Thank you very much. So we're gonna breeze through these, totally not because I didn't make any notes on them and only because we're running out of time. First up, we are at classified retro card back beachhead. So the next three items are going to be on our six inch scale classic card back line. So they are the like foot tall card backs. They've been reinforced so that they don't bend anymore. We're very excited about them. Beachhead up first, a couple more shots here. Second up in this wave is going to be our retro card back snow serpent. Ooh, we like the snow serpents, don't we? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so looking great here, really helping to kind of build out your troop builders in the retro card back collection. We got a lot of requests for these saying that there weren't enough of them the first time that we did them in mainline. So these will be in the retro form. And then really the figure that I get asked the most about how dare I not make more of these great news. Now you can have more Cobra yeah. eels. Um, so all three of these figures are coming to Retro Cardback. They will be available. They are mainline, so available on Hasbro Pulse, wherever fine toys are sold and or pre-ordered. Um, and they will be, I think there are summer wave of Retro Cardback, so they'll be available for pre-order starting on April 4th. And then um, we announced this quite a while ago, but we're really, really excited to have it go up for pre-order on the 4th. That's right. It is the Cobra Ferret ATV and Ferret Scout. Yeah, this thing is so cool. You have no idea yet. Uh, you're going to be deeply pleased. Um, so it comes with our kind of our female scout. The tires are chunky. The ATV is cool. You can do all of these amazing things with it. Matt, I know anytime I like drop a box of product off for Matt and he gets really excited about all of the amazing pictures that he can take. Like this is a slam dunk product. People are gonna be so excited to play with this when they get home. One more set of pictures, just kidding. There's two more sets of pictures. Matt took a lot of pictures of this because it's amazing. Um, so this is going to be a Pulse exclusive product offering going up for uh, pre-order on the 4th. Should be shipping out for summer. So super, super fast GI Joe panel. Also wanted to mention, I forgot it over here, if you'd like to purchase some G.I. Joe while you're at the show today, please go and visit our friends at the Super 7 booth, booth 1120. That's right, it's the Cobra Escape Pack. Ooh, thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> um, and then, because I feel like I kind of shortchanged you by only pre-ordering four items today, I'm gonna do a spontaneous name only reveal. Uh, so coming to the line will be Once a Man Cobra Commander. Right? I know. Snakes are cool. So anyway, stay tuned for more details about that. But Lenny and Tony didn't know that I was going to say that today. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, guys. Um, it's fine. They'll be excited because they're really excited about the figure. So it's going to go great. It's because it looks awesome. It, oh, holy smokes, does it look awesome. <laughs> um, all right. So we just totally speed ran through that. So we have six whole minutes for Q&A. <laughs> So if you want to come up and ask questions, again, only we will only talk to the things that we talked about on the panel. Okay, fabulous. And then while we're actually, I'm going to be super selfish real fast because I always do a video whenever we are doing panels. So I need everybody to cheer while I take this video, okay? And then we can do Q&A. All right. Okay, go. Thank you very much. Okay, please, your question today. Uh, thank you everybody for all the reveals today. And just so everyone knows, if you go to Target, you have until tonight to do the $20 off, $75 or more. Yesterday I got Metalhead and I got Retro Card uh, Jack-O-Lantern and uh, Last Stand Spider-Man. So nice. thank you, nice. thank you guys. We love good toy deals. Yeah, and you can use it as many times as you want. So check your Target to get these new Hasbro figures right now. Perfect, right. thank you. Um, did you have a question too, or did just have the spelling a, I wisdom? Did, okay. I did have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Emily, that uh, that ATV ferret mm -hmm. looks really cool. Thank you, it but does. But I think it might look even better if the Joes take it for themselves and color it with like tiger colors and stuff like Ooh, that. That's a what really, do you think about that? That's a really interesting idea. It's kind of technically not something that we talked about, but you know, nothing is really off <laughs> the saw table that, for We us. saw that ferret. Oh, I'm just I thinking did. about you're, what you're if the Joes totally took it and repainted it. You That'd could cool. do a really beautiful custom of this figure with tiger stripes on it, and it, it's almost like we'd have a sub team. It would look it would... like a paw, like <laughs> Maybe. a tiger's paw. <laughs> That's almost. so interesting. What a great name for a vehicle. Did you just come up with that on the top of your head? That was incredible. It was. It was inspiration. 
from seeing it right now, from something I saw during the panel. It was beautiful. Uh, that's You never know where the line may lead in the future, but I like the way your brain works. And Ben, uh, plastic windows on those uh, new studio series, Sunstreaker, and, uh, or not? Yet. Not yet. Uh, 2025 for Transformers. Thank you. All right, next friend. How are you doing? Hi. Um, good to see you guys again. Thank you. Um, my question's for uh, uh, Priya. Yeah. Hi. Um, it's not really necessarily something you talked about, but something you've shown. Okay. And it's not really like asking you to comment on a future product because the product already exists. Uh, you showed Hammerhead behind the bar. Our bars are going to be getting smaller while you're adding more denizens to our bar scene. Is there maybe, is Hasbro thinking about maybe doing like a little pack for where we could add, you know, parts of the bar to extend our bars and make the, the dial bigger? That's a great point. So obviously, once again, can't talk about anything that hasn't officially been revealed or announced. Are they at least thinking about it? Let but me, yeah. we love hearing your thoughts. So okay. we are listening. I'm glad that we're getting this feedback and I'll definitely take it back to the team. And, you know, nothing's nothing's ever off the table. I guess okay. I'll put it that way. OK, so great. Yeah. Thank you. For, like thank you very much. Anything is possible. Answer. That's always <laughs> the, way. Possible. the world is our oyster. So. Greetings. Hello. My question is for the bearded Decepticon. <laughs> <laughs> My name is John Bailey. I'm the voice of Bumblebee Shockwave, and I had two very important questions ah. for you. Is there a limit on how many shockwaves I may purchase? And does he have an ankle pivot? You're welcome, shot in <laughs> uh, There is no limit, I believe. Uh, Pulse Sweet. might limit you to five, but everywhere you can order him. And I do believe he has ankle pivots. I do believe he lost his bicep swivel, though, in the oh. development process. You uh, gained some. You, you gained some. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello. I have a question for BMAC. Uh, for some of the gamer editions, um, is it possible that we could see some of the alternate weapons that we've never seen before on that were in game, for like Sideswipe? Uh, that's a great question for Evan. Um, I honestly don't know. I know that we're always looking at what was in the game, so we always try to do what we can with accessories. Um, I didn't really point it out in the one picture, but he does have that swappable arm feature still, but we did fix it after that first wave so that it can also be held by other characters that they want to. Um, but if it was in the game, it's on the table. So, Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got time for two more if we go fast. Hey, uh, thank you guys for being here. Um, Emily, this is for you. Uh, big G.I. Joe fan, congrats on how awesome Classified is. So, thank you. We love it, too. Yeah. As far as the ferret, um, Scout looks awesome. Looking forward to Army building that. But is there an option to get, like, after we've had, like, okay, here's enough Scout with ferret? <laughs> Is there, is there going to be an option to um, get just, like, I want more ferrets? Ooh, that is a super solid question and absolutely something that we are looking into figuring how to do in the future, you know, if we've released these vehicles with with kind of their specific characters before. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to kind of open those up, maybe do a yep. rerun in the future? Trouble you bubble. never know. So as everybody has been mentioning, nothing's off the table, but we are trying to figure out how to continue expanding the world-building presence of classified series. So, awesome. thank you. Big I appreciate table. it. There's yeah. Everything's yeah. on it. Exactly. Yeah, There's so you. many things on this table. We, we uh, build stuff in the world of G.I. Joe. So strange. Ah. <laughs> All right, and our last question for today. Hello, how are you guys doing? Um, What's up? First of all, I want to say thank you guys very much. Emily, specifically, no offense. That's all sorry, good. About the <laughs> specifically about the G.I. Joe brand, um, because we had been waiting for so long to get a six-inch line. But I do have a question about the ferret, um, and you guys did discuss it today. So I just want to know, when are we going to get a reveal on the uh, the packaging. I'm excited about ah, the packaging. Yes, so you will get, so, so uh, that is a good note. So for all of the items that we talked about today, photos are going out to our media lists on Monday or Tuesday of next week. Um, so those should all be revealed prior to the pre-order. Um, so we should be there next week. Somebody may have messed up and forgotten to double check that she had pictures of the packaging for her retro card back figures mm -hmm. before we showed up in California. So that's on me. I apologize that I didn't have those, uh, but you should get them no later than next week. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so you. much. And then I've gotten a couple of text messages from people as a clarifier for Ghostbusters. The 118th scale Ecto is like this big. It's under $100. I want to say like $65 maybe. Somebody will tell me I'm wrong about that. It's ballpark in it. It's not a HasLab, it's just a regular item. And then that four pack of O-ring figures is I believe going to be, and I know this is a shock, $44.99 for those four figures, uh, which is 
great for O-rings. Um, so that was our last clarifiers. Anybody have anything that they want to add before we let all these nice people enjoy the rest of their day? I just want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you, Room guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming. God. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us. It has been so lovely. Make sure you're paying attention to our Hasbro Pulse socials, Hasbro Pulse socials over the next week as all of our pre-orders are launching. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today at our first ever Hasbro WonderCon panel. And hopefully we'll see you again next year. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.